On Cougar News, a string of thefts hit the Santa Clarita Valley. And one team is showing their love and support for one of their own. Finally, COC was host to a one-of-a-kind mariachi band for Hispanic Heritage Month. Cougar News starts now. This is Cougar News. Hello everyone and welcome to Cougar News. I'm Taylor Hilo. And I'm Sydney Sweet and here's the latest from the Cougar Newsroom. A wild pursuit of a carjacking suspect came to an end in the Santa Clarita Valley neighborhood. The chase began after a man carjacked a Toyota minivan in Exeter about two and a half hours north of Santa Clarita. The California Highway Patrol's Newhall area officers took command of the pursuit after the van passed the grapevine. A spike strip caused the van to crash into a hillside off the old road in Castaic. The driver was taken into custody. Burglars hit a Santa Clarita neighborhood, leaving several car owners with missing property. I talked with local authorities to find out more on the situation. Four men were arrested in connection with the serial car burglaries that occurred in the Fair Oaks community in Canning Country. The men were caught on several security cameras breaking into parked cars Monday night. Watch as the burglars check each door handle and eventually gain access to some vehicles parked on the street. At this time, it is unknown the extent of property stolen. There were multiple vehicle burglaries. We don't have an exact number right now, um, but it is all under investigation. Sheriff's deputies urge citizens to remain vigilant and remember to lock your cars at all times. Make sure that when you leave your vehicles, they're always locked and secured. Make sure there's no valuables like a purse sitting in the front seat or anywhere in the car. If you have any more information or would like to report a stolen item, please contact the Sheriff's Department. For Cougar News, I'm Taylor Hilo. Sheriff's detectives are asking for the public's help in identifying a man wanted for Grand Theft Auto. But here's the catch. He didn't steal a car. Video footage of the crime shows a man stealing a motorized shopping cart from a Saugus grocery store. The cart is worth more than $2,000. If caught, the man faces Grand Theft Auto charges. If you have any information about the crime, contact the Santa Clarita Sheriff's Station at 661-255-1121. With teen vaping becoming more common, the dangers of e-cigarettes are making headlines. The state and federal governments are both seeking a solution to the problem. Reporter Teruko Morishita shines a spotlight on how city officials feel about the issue. President Trump voiced his concern about the seriousness of teenagers who are vaping. We can't have our youth be so affected. People are dying with vaping, so we're looking at it very closely. <laughs> With the growing number of pulmonary diseases in teens believed to be linked to vaping, Santa Clarita City Hall held an educational forum informing the public on the new trend that's taking lives. And if you're not familiar, you don't understand what it is, we're going to try and educate you as much as tonight as much as we can to get that to you. You know, we're here tonight to talk about the dangers of vaping. And this crowd that has shown up, obviously, um, it is a big concern. There's a lot, there are a lot of studies now coming out exclusively about cancers and um, emphysemas and lung diseases. Vaping has been in the front lines of what health officials fear is an emerging crisis. Educating the youth is needed and just typical behavior with, when there's not really that much research into how it's going to impact their health. So it's, it's alarming and we want to ensure that we're supporting. Our different stuff and the glass this and the different products and it was this thing. The vaping industry has targeted our youth. And in the way that we've been sold it, it has been sold to our teen population as a non-harmful, cool thing to do. We can't do it alone. And if you, everybody in this room, if I could look every one of you in the eye in five seconds and tell you that we cannot do it. For Cougar News, this is Taruko Morishita. So, Maya, I heard there was a guy with no clothes on the metro. You want to tell us about that? I sure can. Local sheriff deputies arrested a naked man who was northbound from Los Angeles to Lancaster. Sheriff deputies were called because a naked man was acting erratic when asked for his ticket, but he did not have a valid ticket or a fare according to the conductor. The man also didn't have any clothes on when departures with the Santa Clarita Valley Sheriff's Station met the train as it stopped at the Newhall Station. Authorities say it is believed that he was under the influence and faced his drug chart related charges. Almost 89% of Americans support requiring law enforcement 
to wear body cameras to record interactions. And now deputies of the Los Angeles County Sheriff Department are expected to be equipped with body cameras soon after county supervi supervisors voted 5-0 to zero in favor of body-worn cameras on Tuesday. The body camera will record all interactions deputies have with the public. Access to the camera footage will be, able, will be available to prosecutors with the Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office, as well as a public defender and alternate public defender. Shirley, Shirley Miller, spokeswoman for the Santa Clarita Valley Sheriff's Station, believes that this will not change anything about the way the deputies do their job because they have always been doing a great job. They asked Benjamin Franklin, what do we have? a republic or a monarchy. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi on Tuesday announced a formal impeachment inquiry of President Donald Trump. Nancy Pelosi accuses Trump of allegedly pressuring the Ukrainian President Zelensky to investigate former Vice President Joe Biden's son, Hunter, over alleged ties to a corrupt Ukrainian energy company. Trump released a phone transcript and records with the Ukrainian President earlier this week to prove his innocence. Republicans argue that there is no basis to impeach Trump, but Democrats argue that there is clear evidence of him pressuring the Ukrainian leader for, politi for political leverage over his Democratic opponent. So far, 24 Democratic representatives said they will not vote for an impeachment hearing, leaving them short of the votes needed to push it to the Republican-controlled Senate. And that's it for What's Trending. I'm Maya Lockett. Back to you. With primaries just around the corner, LA County is revamping their voting system. Kai Turner tells us how COC is helping the county test the new hardware. Voting in Los Angeles County is about to get much easier. The city of Los Angeles is changing options. how you vote. The city is hosting a countywide mock election, testing a new voting system that is designed to make voting easier and more accessible. College of the Canyons is one of the hosts. On the 29th, they are hosting a mock election here at College of the Canyons, and it's actually a pretty big event because it's a mock election for LA County in general. So before, you would vote at a polling location based on your address. But now what's going on is if you live in Los Angeles County, if you go to a voting center, you can vote at that voting center. In the past, LA County residents would be assigned a designated polling place. With the new polling centers, Voters will be able to visit any voting center at their convenience over an 11-day window. The county hopes that this new system will make it easier and more convenient for people to vote. This way we're hoping to encourage more people to get out and vote, uh, take part in the voting process, and hopefully that the voting process will be much easier than it has in the past. In addition to new voting centers, the voting booths themselves have received a massive upgrade. The new booths incorporate a touchscreen interface, a tactile control pad, and accessibility options, such as a tilting screen. The countywide mock election is designed to introduce people to this new system. They will actually learn how to use the, the new devices. Uh, it will be a mock election, so it's going to be fun. There's going to be uh, you know, a way of making this very festive. And after the mock election is over, Call to the Canyons will become host to one of the new voting centers. It doesn't matter if they're from somewhere else in LA County or somewhere else in Santa Clarita, they now can vote on campus. With voting centers all across the county, new and improved voting booths, and a simplified registration form, LA County is doing everything it can to make it easy to vote. For Cougar News, I'm Kai Turner. And as those new county voting systems come online, more people will have access but many students are questioning whether to vote for it all. Some say America's ability to vote within our government is one of our greatest freedoms. So why is it that many students avoid voting? Us students, we, we look at the world and we, we might feel disillusioned or disheartened or, or disappointed and think that because we're young, uh, that we don't have a say. With many feeling that way, is that really what is happening? You know, at the end of the day, a lot of people listen to young people. 18 plus, that kind of um, our generation, the millennial range, is actually the largest voting block, but we vote at the lowest rates. What does having the lowest voting rate mean? If we turn out at the lowest rates, that means our voices are going to be represented the least. At the end of the day, your vote still is your voice in our government. What if some feel they are uninformed and don't want to make the wrong decision? People have to inform themselves of uh, what this country and what this world's going to look like 20, 30 years from now, um, because if they don't, um, they could quite uh, very well be left behind. We all can serve a role and have a voice in our government. 
it means that you have another role to play as a citizen, and that's participation and having a role uh, and a relationship with your with your government. Change in all of its form, uh, and any good change usually comes from young people. For Cougar News, I'm Jonathan Stratton. The Associated Student Government is working to increase voting activity among students on campus. Reporter Daniela Torres shows us how this group is working to increase awareness. The Associated Student Government organized Constitution Day as an opportunity to give students information about voting and constitutional rights. We're not only educating students about the Constitution, but we're, we're putting a different perspective on how Native Americans have contributed to the Constitution um, and, and various groups like that. We're also educating students on their rights under the Constitution, the right to peacefully assemble, to protest, their, their right to vote and their, their right to organize and, and um, their rights, you know, various things under the Bill of Rights. The ASG wanted to bring a different feeling about the Constitution while also giving a little incentive. It's really important that, you know, on this day, you know, students don't just know, oh, this is the Constitution, but we actually make it relevant to them. This is how the Constitution applies to you. This is how voting applies to you. And this is how you can make your lives, your family lives, your schools, uh, your school life, you know, your community's life better by just trying to participate and be more active. Students were able to register the vote while also being sent off with a message. Their vote is actually powerful, even though oftentimes us students think it isn't. Um, and us students really have um, a say and we really can make a difference in the trajectory uh, for the future of our country. Step up and, you know, come in as one and, you know, vote now, vote as soon as possible. For Cougar News, I'm Daniela Torres. Coming up next on Cougar News, a planned development sparks controversy on Santa Clarita's east side. And a somber message to drive safely. Stay tuned. Cougar News. Players from a Santa Clarita Junior Varsity made the ultimate sacrifice for one of their own. Austin Dave shines a light on how the teens showed unity for someone they call a brother. Go. Set. Go. Football teaches many lessons. How to tackle, how to fight, and perhaps handle a problem. Seven on seven, ready. A battle of pigskin on a field where no one is left behind, not even Pedro. Much worse news than we were hoping for, obviously, than, than we thought. And, and to be diagnosed with, with leukemia uh, really struck all of the players, really struck the team hard. Harder than any tackle, it was the news of a young man they consider their brother. Today, instead of fighting for Viking pride, he's fighting for his life. It's not about you, it's about the guy next to you. And so we, we try to instill in them that, uh, that caring for others and, and, and taking care of your brothers and, and having each other's backs. But today, it's not about X's and O's. It's about a bond, unrivaled, a lesson off the field. <laughs> at a place where it's not about what's inside your head and more about what's on it. A barber shop where for just a few hours, everything was okay. The boys each lined up, sat down, and watched their long blades of hair fall. It's just hair, it'll grow back. Each team trading in their locks for love. They just adore him and they want to do whatever they can. And if this is a way to show support, this is how they're going to do it. Say hi to Pedro, say hi to Pedro. From his hospital bed, Pedro joined them by FaceTime. All for you, baby. 
His teammates shared words of comfort. As you can see, bro, we love you very much. I wouldn't do this for almost anybody, but you mean something to me. Even Pedro's father, inspired by the boys, took a seat. The shop's owner, Aldo, took to his hair. Each blade a testament to the true love of a father, a dad with a broken heart. Looking in these kids' faces, I, mean, I know they love my son. My son loves them. I mean, it's touching. It's, 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 I mean, there's really no words. Like I said, it's not so much about the lesson on the field. It's about learning how shedding a few locks of hair can show a whole lot of love. What everybody's doing, I mean, these families, they're, you can tell, I mean, this, this is coming from their heart. Reporting in Valencia, I'm Austin Day. A part of Central Park in Saugus is devoted to remembering youth killed in crashes caused by reckless driving. I visited Santa Clarita's Youth Grove where many were reminding us all to think twice before getting behind the wheel. Nestled in a grove of trees behind Central Park lies a heartbreaking memorial. The Youth Grove was built to honor the memory of Santa Clarita youth 24 and under lost to reckless driving incidents. SCV citizens gather in the small courtyard before walking through the park in remembrance of those who were taken too soon. This year, the Youth Grove contains 114 names. Many of those attending have a close personal connection to these tragic circumstances. My son was killed in the car just before his 20th There was uh, five teens in the car. Uh, the driver was 18. My two sons in back seat were 18 and 15, another 16-year-old in the back and a 17-year-old. Following the Walk of Remembrance, a ceremony is held, allowing loved ones to light candles as names are read aloud. A vow is taken, songs are sung, and speeches are given to honor loved ones and urge us to be more careful on the road. Please, Santa Clarita teens and adults, slow down. CHP officer Josh Greengard is a facilitator of the Every 15 Minutes program, which demonstrates the real-life consequences of reckless driving. Traffic collisions are the leading cause of teenager deaths, so I think teenagers need to focus more on driving, get to their destination safely. Nina Woodbury has some advice for what everyone can do as drivers to protect our youth. A group of Santa Clarita residents are working to preserve what they call a rural, quiet lifestyle. All of this comes after a proposal to build a 77-acre resort in the Sand Canyon area. Reporter Locke Nguyen has the latest on how residents are raising their voices to shut down the proposal. Over 200 residents of Sand Canyon community gathered on September 11, 2019 to discuss how their land joint could change with the new proposal from Santa Clarita City Council. A lot of residents concerned about the new proposed 77 acres resort will affect their rural life style, their community. I'm a firm believer that this is an inappropriate um, use for our community uh, and really will uh, eventually uh, jeopardize and eliminate the special standards district which is a, uh, uh, a primary reason why I and many of us in this canyon uh, have have come here. Moreover, residents of Sand Canyon were also worried about their safety. Sand Canyon community have three routes uh, for emergency disaster evacuation but two routes are now out of service and only one left is the Sand Canyon road behind me. With the new resort will be built and thousand trips of vehicle every day, residents believe traffic would increase and clock streak during the emergency evacuation. We believe that it causes us harm, potential danger in an evacuation. We have been evacuated several times over the last few years, twice for fire, twice for flooding. It's difficult enough getting us out. Now you have a whole other community basically at the resort. After the meeting, a lot of San Canyon residents signed into the petition to repeal the proposal. For Google News, I'm Lok Nguyen.
Santa Clarita residents are no stranger to the power that one kind gesture holds. Reporter Tyra Gamgami shows us how one local nonprofit is working to spread the kindness even further. Life is hard for the 7% of Santa Clarita residents struggling to make ends meet with an income well below the poverty line. But one nonprofit is looking to change that. Uh, well, Help the Children is a humanitarian relief organization helping families with food, clothing, other health care necessities. Um, whatever gets donated to us, um, we like to you know, share with all families in need. Help the Children provides produce, toiletries, and other resources for struggling SCB residents. There's a lot of struggling families out there and um, in some of these areas out here. So uh, just the awareness that we're here, um, it just, you know, it just really lightens their load. But the need goes both ways. Help the Children relies on the community's donations to keep their doors open. These shelves are empty, but it's not because there's nothing to store in them, but because these refrigerators are broken. They're currently working to replace their refrigerators, some of which have reached 90 degrees. I know there's a lot of families that want to help and um, they have time, they have resources, um, and so we're here on both ends, those that are in need and those that want to help. So we're, we're... The success of the operation also depends on the work done by volunteers. Without them, Help the Children wouldn't be able to provide their services to those that need them the most. We're assisting fathers and mothers and, and children to be able to flourish and build them up. And that's what our heart is. Our heart is to be able to help people no longer need our programs. For Cougar News, I'm Tyra Gamgami. Yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for me. And all of Santa Clarita on Main Street. Reporter Cameron Martell took a trip to the deep seas of New Hall for Santa Clarita's block party. Shiver me timbers! There's a hidden treasure on Main Street on the third Thursday of every month. It's where residents and business owners come together to create a family. If every town in the world were like this one, no man would ever feel unwanted. One Main Street owner kept her business open for census and after closing joined her family for the fun. Kept the store open a little late tonight and then we just came down here to enjoy the games and fun. With live music for the crowd, food trucks, and activities for the kids, the whole family can enjoy themselves on a Thursday night. It's really fun. I like the pirate ship. I like the feeling of it. Even Captain Jack Sparrow and his crew made an appearance. Pirates everywhere. We have a ship. We have little pirates, big pirates, and handsome pirates. Great. Just had a little bit of rum. I'm good. I'm on Main Street. And for all you ghouls, goblins, and witches out there, on October 17th, Halloween is coming to census. Reporting live for Cougar News, I'm Cameron Martell. It was a busy weekend for the entertainment industry, right, Josh? Yes, yeah, Sydney, and it's only actually getting busier. The Emmys, which had no hosts this year, aired Sunday night. Game of Thrones won for Outstanding Drama Series, and Peter Dinklage won for Supporting Actor in a Drama Series. This being his fourth win for portraying Tyrion Lannister, Dinklage broke a record and is now holding the most Emmys for the same character. Besides the huge wins at the Emmys, Sunday night also hosted a rather bizarre moment as actor Terrence Howard announced his retirement from acting. In doing so, he discussed how when he receives his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, he would tell the world how gravity is not a force, instead it is an effect. He told KTLA 5 on the carpet how he planned on feeling Saturn without the help of gravity. He received his star yesterday and only thanked his family for helping him through life. Fall season for television has arrived, and this is a rather big year for TV. Modern Family, one of the highest award-winning comedies, is on its last of 11 seasons, having their last season premiering today. The new Fox crime drama Prodigal Son, starring Tom Paine, Michael Sheen, and Halston Sage, premieres Monday. Kobe Smulders' newest show, Stumptown, also started today on ABC. Perfect Harmony starts tomorrow on NBC. South Park returns for their controversial 23rd season. And last but not least, the fan favorite show Supernatural starts its final season October 10th, ending one of the longest serial dramas on TV. This past year, video game giant GameStop closed a lot of their stores. Jesse Abarquez sees what the local gaming community thinks about the changes on GameStop's horizon. Online retail giants such as Amazon are taking over leaving brick and mortar businesses in the dust. However, popular video game store GameStop refuses to back down. 
In an effort to trade quantity for quality, GameStop closed one of four locations in Santa Clarita to cut operation costs. GameStop locations in Arizona are currently testing an environment that will transform them from just another retail store to an inviting game and pop culture destination. Can a retail chain really achieve the success with their community that local comic shops have? I reached out to the owner of Santa Clarita's Paper Comics Heroes to hear what he had to say about the matter. They're a large corporation that's run by people who don't understand the culture. They're just trying to, to, to read numbers and figure out how to make those numbers add up to a billion dollars. And they're just, they don't understand their customers, they don't understand the culture, they don't understand the, their industry as a whole. They're just people that are basically, you know, looking at numbers and bean counting and trying to, you know, figure out how the industry works that way. But as of understanding or trying to have some insight into the products, I don't really see that from their end. Local video and tabletop gamer Brooks Miller was just a bit more optimistic and had this to say about the future of GameStop. GameStop moving to this lounge model seems pretty interesting. Definitely is a more friendly atmosphere and will bring some people in to hang out. But how long are people really going to be buying physical copies of games? I myself have only bought digital games for the last two, three years. Uh, Unless my life depended on it. So, will that be successful? Possibly. Uh, I would only see that happening if they change their business model entirely to bring in some other types of products more akin to comic shops. A source close to the matter would not appear on camera but said that gamers new and old should be excited about where GameStop is heading. They say that the direction GameStop is taking has no limitations and will be a game changer for the industry. However, only time will tell. With Cougar News, this is Jesse Abarcus. Vault Hunters rejoice. The long-awaited video game Borderlands 3 was released and the game is unbelievably entertaining. Five years after the events of Borderlands 2, a new cult has emerged called Children of the Vault. The leaders of the cult, Queen Tyrene and her brother Troy, are seeking to take control of the universe by finding a map that leads to vaults all over the galaxy. I can't help but feel some of these missions are like doing chores. They acknowledge this, but it continues to be a stress. Besides that one downside, the game is practically flawless. The gorgeous animation and visuals keep me hooked for longer than needed. Unlike any other Borderlands game, this one finally leaves the planet of Pandora and ventures out to other worlds, giving each world a different aesthetic and really shows how the artistic team got to be creative. There are very few games that can pull off what this game has done, and it makes me very excited for the future of the gaming industry. A solid nine out of 10. Two of that nine goes to the greatest character ever, Claptrap. Playing the same board games over and over gave a group of friends the idea to build their own board game about butts. Debbie Martinez takes a look at the creation now making its way here to Santa Clarita. Aren't we tired of always hearing these boring title names to board games such as Monopoly and Uno? Well, a group of friends decided to build a board game called the Everyone Shares One Butt Game, inspired mostly by video games and butts. Yup, butts. Justin Ricafort, lead designer and creator of the Everyone Shares One Butt Game, created this board game in San Diego and now visiting Los Angeles to show off the new game. So how exactly does one play it? So, Alright, so how you play the Everyone Shares One Butt game is everyone is a disembodied tour, so you pick one of eight characters that are in the game and play stomach cards to extend your stomach to connect to the butt. So there's only one butt that exists in the game, and once you connect to it, you win. And you play all of these different cards with different effects, like changing the direction and the orientation of the butt, um, or stunning players, or giving them poops and toxins, so it gets really crazy, and it's inspired by games like Mario Party, where you're constantly screwing over other players. The game will only cost $35, and if anyone is interested in buying, follow them on Twitter and Instagram at the Everyone Shares One Bug Game. For Cougar News, I'm Debbie Martinez. And that does it for entertainment. Back to you guys. The world was watching on Friday as the long-awaited Area 51 raid took place. Here's the complete story of the joke that became real. Josh Ehrenberg has more. Clap the cheeks! Clap the cheeks! Clap the cheeks! What started out as a joke online turned into something a little more. I got a Facebook invite and I wasn't really sure what it was and it said Area 51 and I was really confused and I was like, dang, 
what what are we doing like all my friends are doing this and I kept reading and scrolling down I'm like oh no this has to be a joke the event created on Facebook was about people running into area 51 eventually over 2 million people said they would join and it's gonna go down in history books and it's gonna be like one of those things you're like I was alive during when that happened as talk of the event grew, the military had no choice but to remind the people that it is illegally trespassing and they are armed and ready if people were to storm. I think that's more just them trying to scare people to avoid this whole thing from happening. After the military made their statement, not many committed to the raid, and the creator of the Facebook post created a safer event nearby called Alien Stock. No more than three days before the raid, Blink-182 rocker Tom DeLong posted three videos of UFOs that the Navy confirmed to be real and should not have been posted. This leaves COC students wondering. The UFO is an unidentified flying object. A UFO does not mean that it is aliens. For all we could have known, it would have it could have just been a drone flying above. And there's water on Mars, like... There's so many possibilities. I'm actually excited. For Cougar News, I'm Josh Ehrenberg. One unique mariachi band spread their songs of heritage and inclusion at the COC Amphitheater. I had the chance to see why people from all across Santa Clarita came out to enjoy the diverse sounds of this one-of-a-kind band. College of the Canyons hosted a very special band at its Hispanic Heritage Festival today. The band was made up of LGBTQ plus musicians, making it the only mariachi band of its kind. It was created as a safe space for Latino LGBTQ members and has grown into a message of inclusion. Mariachis can perform all types of repertoire and could be made up of all types of different people. By booking this band, College of the Canyons hopes to send a message. There's a place for all of us in this world. A world polarized, today, a bit more peaceful. It would help make us stronger. You know, it'll all unite us rather than divide us. But not everyone has the same beliefs. A call to the school warned there might be an anti-LGBTQ group coming to protest. Although it didn't happen, COC took it as another opportunity for acceptance. We do embrace uh, all points of view, even those that are not, uh, that are appalling to us. Reporting for Cougar News, I'm Taylor Hilo. That does it for this edition of Cougar News. I'm Sydney Sweet. Remember, you can catch us on the web at cougarnews.com. And I'm Taylor Hilo. You can also send us news tips or story ideas to our Twitter handle, COC underscore Cougar News, and follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Have a good night, everybody. College of the Canyons creates possibilities. It's a gateway to opportunities. A place where students learn they can believe in themselves. Behind every possibility at College of the Canyons are the people. Together we focus on achieving success one student at a time. That focus is a reflection of what we value. It defines who we are. We are. We are. We are College of the Canyons.